Good morning, everybody. It is a chilly one this morning on the farm, but everybody's got to be fed and taken care of. I am Brooke with Mrs. Coghill Farm. Nugget and Goldie, first ones to greet me this morning. How are y'all doing? I got to check and see if there are any more emu eggs. To this point, I have five. Uh, one is in the house and I'm waiting to collect three in order to give them to Miss Catherine. Goats are hollering, we gotta get moving. Good morning, Mr. Moody and Miss Mildred. Y'all are anxiously awaiting breakfast, as I can tell. Let's see if I can't get y'all both fed and on each end of the trough where you're supposed to be. Always a game of switcheroo, first thing. Moody thinks his other side's better. So he, uh, he sends Mildred over, which she gladly obliges. She's a, she's a nice lady. He's not always the perfect gentleman, but they make a wonderful, wonderful pair. And Jesse makes sure that they eat all their food, right, Jesse? You come over every morning to make sure that they clean up their plates like they're supposed to and behave. Jesse, I don't think you better sneak any of that. <laughs> That's right, just stand there and be a guard donkey like you're supposed to. Get y'all's water filled up. And then off y'all will go into the pasture where you're intended to be. A lot of y'all have questioned about why we hadn't shown Moody and Mildred on camera. And it's simply because they no longer stay in this small area. They have realized that the pastures are greener and better across the way. So they come and they eat in the morning and then off they go. So they have not received a whole lot of camera time because of that fact. but. We're gonna try to show more of them in their morning feedings. Everybody loves to see sweet Mildred and sweet Moody. Y'all should see his tongue, it is massive. I know you've seen him lick me before, but he uses that tongue to scoop up the food off the bottom of the trough. She does too, but his is obviously a, a good bit bigger than hers. Enjoy the rest of your food, buddy. Let everybody see that big old tongue with you licking up your feed. Goodness gracious. Y'all guess what? Miss Peaches slept in the right stall last night. She's having her breakfast right now in the correct stall. So I have no idea what she's thinking by playing musical stalls. Well, she was in the right one this morning waiting on her food. Peaches, I hope you enjoy your day, baby. And enjoy that wonderful breakfast that you're having. Maybe you found your peaches, like your book. You were searching for your peaches, maybe you found them. So now you're back in the right stall. Honey or Jesse one was trying to tell us that they need to be let out. All right, goats, come on. Goats and donkeys and babies will all be reunited. Come on, babies. Come on. Good morning, me, honey. You weren't over there with Jesse when she was trying to make sure that the cows ate all their food. What were you off doing? Huh? What were you doing? Oh, I bet you were making sure Peaches was in the right stall. Oh, Gwenny's Jessie got to make sure she gets her love in, too. That's right. Y'all are so sweet. Yes, you are. Come here, honey. Get you some love in. Yeah. Honey and Jessie. Jessie said, no, no. It's all my loving right now. All mine. Give everybody some kisses like you did last time, Jessie. That's right. Good girl. So while I've got all the goats following behind me, we're going to go over to the fence line 
and see if I can see if Goldie has laid another egg. This last time I wasn't able to, to see if there was an egg there, but I got Jason to occupy them while I crossed over. Oh, everybody's feeling good this morning. Y'all gonna show me the way? Baby's in the lead. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Ooh, did y'all hear that hollering? That's usually an indication to me that a goat's in heat. So Miss Paris is over two years old. She was two in June. And we like to wait until our Nigerian, uh, we like to wait until our Nubians are at least two years old before they're bred. Just gives them a chance to mature in all ways and um, gives their bodies a chance to be fully developed and perfectly capable of giving birth. So, we may be approaching time to put Mr. Mo with Paris and see if we can't have a beautiful baby. I told you guys I was not gonna breed Fifi anymore. Let me show you. So Fifi is right here. She is the mother of the triplets, which is Laura, Curtis, and Little Red. And you can see that her udder is just not, not the way it should be. She had some problems supplying milk to those babies, and that was a definite indicator to me that she does not need to be bred anymore. Now, Capri's perfectly healthy. She could be bred, but why do I need to breed Capri again when I have Paris that can be bred to Mo? Um, now, Capri, she could be bred to Mo as well because Mo is of no relationship to any goat here. But it's Paris's turn. So I need to talk to Jason and see where he stands with uh, putting Mo and Paris together. That would leave Joe by himself. So we'd have to figure out a little something to do there because goats are herding animals and they really don't need to be alone. Uh, probably a week or so would do it, especially if I know for sure that Paris is in heat. Um, that sound was an indicator to me. Her making that little holler. Usually they holler just about the entire time they're in heat. Um, Bootsy's rubbing on the camera. She's wanting to get some camera time here, but Bootsy. That's usually a good indicator to me that, that a goat is in heat. And they act a little bit different. She's got her tail up right now. Uh, think we might have to work something out here, especially if Paris is going to be bred this year. We're going to miss the window. Nubians are seasonal heat. She's got her head up in the air. She's smelling, which means the fall months starting October, November, December, January, that's their, their heat months. Now, Bootsy, on the other hand, is a Nigerian dwarf, and they are year-round heat cycles. So Bootsy goes into heat one time a month year round. Mr. Curtis here, he doesn't go into heat because he's he's been weathered and he's going to be a good boy just for a pet for the farm. All right, I'm at I'm at the nest where I have an emu with me, but um, I can't tell. He's got it covered up really, really good. So the nest is covered, but I will somehow, some way, check to see if egg number six is here today. And there's, that's Mr. Nugget up close to us, and Goldie's walking in the backdrop. And also, if I breed Paris with Mo, I would want to use the side pasture that the ba babies are used to going in that stall at night and sleeping. So it would kind of be like musical chairs all over again. The babies would need to come to the pasture where the rest of the goats are. Of course, I would feed them separately at night just to make sure that they had all the grain that they need because the other goats are obviously dominant. So they may try to, uh, to bully them at feeding time. Other times it's fine. They, there's no competition with anything else. But during feeding time, of course, the dominant one's going to get 
the majority of the food. So that would mean at night, I'll have to train these babies to come to a different stall, which is the one right behind me that leads to the milk room. So the babies could go in this stall at night, the big goats could continue to go in their stall at night, and then Paris and Mo could be on the other side of the barn. I don't want to put Joe and Mo in there with Paris because obviously Joe's Paris is daddy and he would indeed try to breed with her. She's back there crying right now. So I think she's definitely in heat. So you may ask, why do I want to breed Paris? Well, I've told y'all in the past that I have had a very hard time parting with babies. I have to keep them all. But there is a little girl who is, she's, she reminds me so much of Mary Carl at, at, this, at this age. Her name is Emma. She lives in Alexander City, and that's not too far from us. And she, as well as her parents, would love to have Nubian goats. They would, her mom plans to milk a goat and of course, if I had a male and a female, they couldn't be bred together, but it would give them a start. They could weather the male or they could even have two females. So I met this sweet family several years ago at one of our first meet and greets that took place at Petals from the Past. And since that time, I just knew that they were good caretakers for animals. This past um, meet and greet that was in September, I met the family again and little Emma told me that she would love to have goats. And so after the meet and greet was over, I asked the father who brought her to the meet and greet if um, I could have their phone number and he did. So I texted the mom and I asked her if they would be interested in us giving them a Nubian goat for Emma, Nubian goat or two for Emma, if we bred Paris. Because without having a home for them, I can't continue to breed and just collect. So Jamie, Emma's mom, was very happy and she immediately said yes. So I told her that we would plan to breed Paris this season and we would plan to give little Emma the baby. Of course, we would make sure that the baby had colostrum and they would decide at that time whether they wanted to take on the task of bottle feeding or if they would want the baby to be weaned. That's all yet to be worked out. But knowing that I have a home for a baby to go to just makes it all the more worthwhile I can milk Paris, I can benefit from that, and then little Emma can benefit from having her dream of starting a goat herd of her own. Now I gotta show y'all something that I happened upon yesterday when I came out to, to feed and water the chickens. This has nothing to do with goats. Look at here. So we're in October. This is the climbing pinky that's out in front of the greenhouse. And look down here under the climbing pinky. Do y'all see that? That is a duck nest and it has looks like four eggs in it so far. Yeah it has four eggs in it. Yesterday morning when I came out to feed that duck scared me to death because the water spigot is right here. So I walk over and I and I flipped the water spigot up and when I did she came out from under the the rose and just about had a collision with me it was a mess and I said duck you know this is not the right time of the year for you to be laying and hatching baby ducks so that's another thing I got to talk to Jason about see what we want to do about the duck nest he's gonna be all ears here in a minute and hear me out about a couple of situations that we need to decide what we're gonna do about 
Dee Dee keeps on like she is, I may not have to worry about what to do with the duck eggs. She may decide for me. She's really, really close to where that nest is. And I'm not gonna run her off. Well, my goodness, y'all are not in the proper position this morning. That's not where you lay your eggs and roosters don't go in a nesting box anyway. What in the world do y'all have going on? Do y'all see something that I need to know about? They're all kind of looking towards the wall. Interesting. Well, I gotta get under y'all. We gotta collect eggs and get those out of the way. Y'all act like you see a ghost. What's over there? I don't see a thing. Okay. Clear the way, please. Clear the way. There we go. Get down, buddy. Get down. Get down. Get down. There we go. Goodness gracious, girls. Y'all are doing pretty good considering the cooler temperatures. So since I'm in the coop gathering eggs, I want to show y'all a glimpse of the barred rocks that are still young. They're still... They're fully feathered, they're fine outside. There's no worries there. But I want to move them to another location, meaning move the whole bus to another location before I let them out and let them be free with the rest of the flock. They're, they're big enough now, I just want them to know to come back inside. And I don't wanna have to move the bus because we put the bus in where the sun hip is and it won't take long before we need to move it again. So when we move it to the next location, I'm gonna let these guys out and free range with the rest of the chickens. But here they are. You can see how much they've grown and how big they are. And this area is plenty of space for them to move around and get acclimated to the other chickens before they are let out with them. And they can even see down below, you can see the mesh grating that we use on the floor so the chickens can, you know, they can visually see each other and, and get acclimated. Now they're still making little chick noises, but you can see they, they have their full feathered coat on. So no worries about adding heat anymore because once they reach that state where they've got their full, full feathers, they don't need heat anymore. Unless you're um, in a climate that's like gets down into the negatives. Now that's a whole nother story. Um, as young birds, they're obviously more vulnerable than an older bird, but no heat needed once they're fully feathered. Right girls? Y'all sure are pretty and y'all are starting to come out. Here's the, uh, here's the door and y'all need to go back in that area. I said I'm not letting you out until we move one more time, okay? It won't be too much longer, I promise you. So before I head out of here, I see Dee Dee, but she's across the way. Let me see if she got one of the eggs. Nope, she did not. There are still four eggs in the nest. I don't know how she didn't find those. So I see Jason has made his way to the barn and I gotta take these eggs to the barn anyway. So maybe perfect opportunity to see what his thoughts are about possibly putting Miss Paris and Mr. Mo together. Well, I'm glad you're in here. Why's that? Because I need to kind of talk to you about something. All right, so here's my question. What you gonna talk to me about? Well, I'll talk to you about not getting me in the hell with that shelf, first of all. <laughs> but second of all, so I think Paris is in heat. Okay. She's, um, you know how they kind of holler yeah. When they're in heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. she's been doing that. She's been acting strange. Her tail's up. Uh huh. Displaying that sort of stuff. Right. Can you remember the family that I met at Petals? Yeah, 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 yeah. That um, we've met several times. Yeah. So I have a home for a baby. So you want to breed pairs? Well, I wanted to know what you thought about it. You know, obviously we can't breed her with Joe because that's her daddy. Right. But the whole reason we have Mo is to breed him with with does right, that are right. not related to him. So how do you, do you think we should breed Paris? Uh -huh. Because I told little Emma that if Paris had a baby, then, you know, she could have, one. She could have it. Yes. But how do we do that and Joe be 
You'd have to bring Mo over here. Well, I know, but is Joe going to be okay alone? Uh, that's my whole, that's my whole question. Is what do we do about Joe being alone? Hmm. Will he be okay? It's just going to be for a week or so. You don't have to do it that long. Well, I don't know for sure that she's in heat, so I want to okay. be sure okay. that she's bred before I take her back. I got you, you know, she's she's just playing signs, but it's not like I can ask her if she's in heat. Yeah. So what do you think? I don't want to miss the window. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Nubians are seasonal breeders. I know what you're going to say. Let me think about it. That's his answer. Let me think about it. <laughs> so while you're thinking about it, I got another question. Okay. There's a duck that's made a nest over under your climbing pinky rose. Do I let her continue to lay and let her hatch those babies, or do I take those eggs? I think we need to take them. I just, I just don't want to get overpopulated. Because well, that causes for a whole different. That's right. Problem. And there's no difference in taking a duck egg. Or versus chicken. taking a chicken egg yeah, yeah. versus taking an emu egg. They're not sitting. It's not like you're taking from them once it started developing. Right. It's the same thing as a egg that you eat. Right, right. So you yeah. think take them. Yeah, we don't need to be overpopulated because that, that can create disease issues. And okay. then if it gets too big, then you know instead of having eight ducks, then the next time you got... 80. Well, you got 25, and then that 25, then you got 100, and it happens really fast. Well, she's got four so far. I don't yeah. know where she intends on stopping, but I really don't think we ought to wait until she stops no. and starts sitting. I think we need to collect them. Well, I thought Dee Dee was going to take care of it. Yeah. I didn't even have to discuss it, but she didn't. Oh, she Dee -Dee. left all four eggs. So maybe. Slacking. Dee Dee's slacking. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to let you think about the Mo situation. Yeah. Try to come up with a plan. I mean, I mean you can always put Tip in with Joe. Yeah. Tip's kind of a bully over he here. He is anyway. kind of a bully. But I don't want him to be bullied over there either. No, and then when we bring Tip back over here, he's going to smell like a book for two weeks. Oh, that's true, weeks. and he's going to make everybody stink. Joe, How about we do this? Okay. I got a perfect plan. What? Why don't we put Paris and Mo to the pasture next to Joe? Okay. And then Joe will have them on one side, Loretta and Gus on the other side, and that would solve it all. And then we wouldn't have to worry about the barn smelling like a book. You don't think that um, Joe could breed her through the fence? No, I don't think so. Plus, there's electricity on it. So then we can cut the electricity on. We can cut the power back on. So there's no chance he could touch no. the fence? No. Yeah, and then it'd be like they're together. They're together. It won't be any different. Right. It won't be by itself. Okay. So you just have to think it out. Good thing I gave you a minute. <laughs> That's right. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I don't know why I didn't think to move Paris over here and put her in with Mo, who can be next door to Joe, and Joe won't feel like he's alone. Look, here's the pasture. It already has a shelter in it, has the porta hut. And then here's the next door area where you will find stink, stunk, stank, whatever you want to call them, nasty boys. Mo used to be white, now he's yellow, but that's uh, brilliant. So sometimes just throwing an idea to somebody else makes all the difference, right Mo? Are you ready to meet your wife, by the way? I'm not gonna touch you. So Jason's gonna come and help me while I go in the pasture and look for an egg. This will be number six if there's an egg there. I told y'all number five's in the house, anxiously awaiting. But um, I have a feeling there's probably gonna be number six out here. But you just don't ever know. So you can see Nuggets, right now he's over here by me. But as soon as he sees Jason, he's gonna go have a seat and get his loving. I do, I want you to occupy him. All right, you got it from there? Cause he's not coming. Wind's picking up, it feels really good today. He said, oh, that's my daddy. Watch y'all, as soon as he sees Jason, he's gonna go, he's gonna go visit. 
Hey, buddy, your daddy's coming in. There he goes. I knew it wouldn't take but a minute. As soon as he sees Jason, he leaves me and immediately goes to see Jason. I mean, that that is just, that's a bromance if I ever seen one. My buddy. It is your buddy. All right, keep him there for a second. I, if, if I come back and Goldie's in your lap like that, I don't know what's gonna happen. All right, so here we go. Here's the nest. Oh, guess what? Here's number six. All right, I always have to look and see which one has the one on it. That one does not have a one on it. This one has a one on it. So we're leaving that one. I'm gonna cover it right back up. There we go, number six. So obviously the eggs being taken has had no effect on her laying. That one, that number two egg that was laid in an inconspicuous place was just an oddity. I think it just may have accidentally popped out. You know, if I was, if I had that big of an egg, this big of an egg up inside me, and I laid down to sleep, I'd be glad for it to come out where I decided to call it a night. And maybe that's what happened with her. I don't know. But nonetheless, every egg since then has been laid in that nest. I'm coming back by and Nugget and his BFF, Jason, are still... <laughs> <laughs> You a little leery of her? You don't have your earrings in, do you? Good. Because you know what would happen. Oh, he looks like he's having so much fun. Told you I was, I was about to get me a belt buckle. You reckon Nugget would get my belt buckle? He probably would. He probably be, would be a little jealous, too. He needs one that says Goldie on the back of his. Because that's his woman. If Goldie lays down there, I'm telling you. Uh, you are the, you are the, em oh, here she goes. You are the emu whisper. I mean, Nugget likes me, but Jason's his person. Jason is his person. Can you get any better than that? Sweet baby. My buddy. You sure we don't need any more? They wouldn't be like you. Know. Well, we got other pastures. We could try them out. Oh, goodness. You know, instead of having a donkey for a guard in each pasture, we could have an emu for a guard in every single pasture. Mm-hmm. He says, as long as you keep me, I don't care. Just keep me around for good measures. He's a special one. Oh, big baby. He is especially special. God love him. All right, y'all. So I'm glad that we have a decision made on what we will do with Paris. It's um, it's a good one. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I've... I'm so glad that Jason made the decision because I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. But I do want to make sure Paris is in heat. I don't want her to have to stay over there longer than necessary. So um, this weekend, we're just gonna kinda watch her, monitor her. And if we see that she's in heat, we're gonna go ahead and put them together. But today was used as a decision as to what we're gonna do and uh, just glad we have a decision. Now I gotta show y'all number five so I can add number six. Okay, y'all. So here's number five. I've had it in the house. I wrote number five on it. And I'm going to get number six, which is here, and do the same thing. Number six. And that way, when one more is laid, I will get these to Catherine. She likes to do three at a time. And that way she can keep logs of three versus one, two at different times. So here we go, um, two more. I will keep you guys updated every time she lays another one. And uh, y'all don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, y'all be good. Oops.